percent living here in the U.S. But to stop the madness, professionals need to study the minds of those behind bars. The problem here, though, mass murderers will only talk to certain people they feel comfortable with. But one of the few they trust lives in Georgia. News 12 Jessica Dill got a glimpse into this forensic consultant's life. In 1990, Anthony Mioli's friend was murdered while he was in college. That case today remains a cold case. Well, that year, Mioli switched majors to criminology and decided he wanted to find out why somebody would hurt an innocent stranger. So now he's living out his mission. This was not a conscious decision. This was not a thought-out decision. This was something that was happening that I was not aware of. That's the voice of Lee Boyd Malvo, now known as the D.C. Sniper, infamously known for the 2002 shooting spree around D.C., killing 10 people. Ava, afterwards, was there any remorse? And on the other line, Georgia's own Anthony Mioli. I like to learn, to engage the individual, learn about them emotionally, what, what drove them, what, what made their personality, who they are. Mioli is a forensic consultant, appearing on ID Discovery, lecturing students, and writing books on the criminal mind. He's devoted half his life to studying how criminals think and works to understand what drives people to commit crime. Arguably the most common threat I have seen among all serial killers when asked is a lack of love, which is a shocking thing to hear. It's that simple. I was sitting down writing my journal, and I said, I mean, I have no one. Through prison visits, daily phone calls, and hundreds of letters, Mioli spent years getting the country's most notorious to open up to him. I build up a very unique trust with them. And sometimes they will divulge information not known to the general public. And I can either use that for my, my lecturing or for helping people who are investigating cold cases that relate to similar characteristics of that person or that crime. And that's exactly what happened with the young DC sniper. Well, initially Lee started writing poetry, which was very insightful. It was very deep and dark, and it, it seemed to reflect a lot of abuse. Through a unique relationship, Mioli was able to get something from Malvo no one else could, a diary. He told me that he had written this diary about two and a half years after he had been incarcerated. He had to process what he had done. So he put it down in a step-by-step -step diary as to his childhood, his adolescent years, and his mother, his father, and when he met John Muhammad and what led up to the D.C. sniper shootings. He only says his job is not easy. Take, for example, Danny Rowley, executed in 2006 after killing five students at the University of Florida. I interviewed him in 2003 down in Rayford, Florida, and his case was probably among the most heinous of all the cases I've ever dealt with. I couldn't grasp how the individual who I was talking to did these actual acts, how he was able to commit these crimes. But even through the horror, Mioli was learning. For him, it was revenge. He wanted to get back at someone who had the life that he wanted. And so he attacked and killed five students who were going to have the life that he wanted. But for someone who sees the chilling details that are kept away from the public, Mioli still sees them as people. I look at them as human beings gone wrong. And a lot of people don't like to look at them that way. They want to just label them as monsters or evil and get rid of them. If it is possible, find it in your heart to forgive. But for your own sake, do not allow my actions and the actions of John Mahal to wreak havoc on you for the rest of your life. After everything he hears and sees, how does Anthony Mioli still see these men and women as human? We're going to find out tomorrow in part two when we dive into his office filled with hundreds of letters and drawings from serial killers across the world. Mioli will take us inside the criminal mind, find out what you should know about the people around you. Mioli says he does it all for the victims. Proceeds from his lectures, books, and even art shows all go to families of the victims. Politics tonight, we're on your side with the